guys and welcome back to another tutorial on how to make an overlay for your video games. We're doing Pokemon right now. Um, the first episode, make sure to go check that out if you haven't. We actually created an overlay in GIMP um, for our Pokemon game here. The next episode, we utilize that overlay into OBS, put the video game in there so it fit the screen properly. And then this episode, we are going to jump into our video editor. I use Sony Vegas 15, but it may be very similar across the board. I don't, haven't used any other editing programs, um, but we're gonna put our files in here and figure out how we now edit our overlay and make it into an actual video. So first thing is, is you wanna create a new, I wanna save changes. And you want to make sure that you match any of the settings that you use for your video. So if it's a 1920 by 1080 video, you want to make sure you use those settings. If you're using a, a what is it, 1280 by 720, you want to make sure you match those settings. But I'm not going to get too much into these settings here. My video was a 60 FPS, so we're going to make sure that. The one thing you do want to make sure is you turn off this sample and turn this on to either in a little bit or blunt fields. The rest of this you can keep about the same. It really just depends on your computer. Then we're gonna hit okay. So now we have a new file up here, it says untitled. So then we're gonna drag and drop any of the stuff we want to put in here. So we're gonna get our video that we made that I didn't actually name. Okay, so here's my video file. Oops, right here. And then if you have like an intro, usually I'll put an intro in. And then if you make an extra, because YouTube now has those in screens, you can put one of those in, whatever you want to do in here. But you're first going to drag down your video first. If you have anything extra to add, that's fine. But you want to drag your video first because when you drop it, you want to hit, you want to match your project settings and you want to hit yes. At the bottom left, you'll see a buffering depending on how long the video is. This is only a two minute video, so it didn't take very long to buffer, but make sure you wait for that to buffer. You can go to the top right here um, to get a better view of your video. Vegas is known for this being laggy, um, so just be aware of that. If you are not getting a smooth preview of the video you're editing down in your timeline, mess around with these settings up here. You can do preview, um, I find that best in half works really well. Anyways, we now have our, our recorded video with our overlay via OBS into Sony Vegas so that we can edit it. This whole video, whether I caught a Pokemon or not, just has a blank canvas overlay and there's a reason for that. So first mess with your settings here. Let me delete these double tracks real quick. I have to do that for my other videos. So normally when you record, you'll have one video track, one audio input track, which would be like your microphone, and then one audio output track, which would be the actual video game sound and noises. The next thing we wanna do, I'm actually gonna mute these so they don't overlay here, is go through your video, right? If you wanna cut anything out, you can do that. You just hit S and I can cut out this section, I can delete it, whatever I wanna do with it. Control Z is your saving grace. If you wanna see a video on kinda of little tips and tricks on how to do that stuff, uh, let me know in the comments. But right now we're just gonna focus on how we edit this overlay into Sony Vegas and how we render it so we can actually make a video that we can upload onto like YouTube or any uploading sites you need to use. So the next thing I wanna do is open Git Backup. You wanna open your file, your overlay that you originally created. So I'm just going to drag this into GIMP. And here is my empty canvas, right? So this is what we used in OBS. This is what we created a lot that for our very first episode. The next thing we want to do is start to add what happened in this episode. So in this episode, I have a mudkip. So I'm going to put a mudkip in this box, right? So I'm going to go here. I'm going to go find my mud kit picture and put it in. Okay. So now I have my mud kit entered in to my overlay because in this episode, in this particular episode of Pokemon Alpha Sapphire, I already had a mud kit. So I have 
my mudkip in my GIMP file, then what I'm going to do is file. You can save it so you don't lose what you just created, but then you're going to do export as. And then what I'm going to do, and this is what I do, you can kind of find your own way to do this, is I'm going to do episode 1A. A meaning this is the first part of my episode. I want episode 1A. This is going to be the first part of my episode because I only have a mudkip in here. So then I'll export it. Make sure it says .png so it stays transparent. And then, in my episode, I actually caught a zigzagoon. So then, what I want to do is here, at about two minutes, I want to add Mudkip, or have Mudkip's already there, but I want to add Zigzagoon to my overlay because I just caught him. So I will go back into GIMP, using the same file I've been using, and add a Zigzagoon in there. Alright, so now I have my Zigzagoon in my overlay because I have a Zigzagoon and I have a Mudkip. And then I want to do the same thing. File, export as, episode 1, because I'm still editing episode 1, and then put B. Because that means, okay, A is going to be the first part of this episode, B is going to be the next part. Again, this is just how I do it. You can find your own way to do it. It just keeps it simple, and I know, you know, what I'm referencing. Alright, so now we have episode 1 and episode 1B. Episode 1A and 1B. One, so you're going to grab both of those and throw them in your layer. Then down here on your timeline, you want to right click your video file on the left side, usually it's one, and insert another video track. It's just going to be an empty video track and you want to make sure that it is e above your actual video itself. And then what I'll do is I'll put my picture, my episode 1A in, and I'll just drag it as much as I need. Because that whole part of this episode, I have Mudkip on my team. And then I'm going to find, and you can click either down below or up here in the timeline, I'm going to find where I caught Zigzagoon. Alright, I caught Zigzagoon there, so I'll drag my image all the way to that cursor. And then I will enter B. Because that says, okay, now I have caught Mudkip, or have Mudkip here. And I have Zigzagoon here. Now the cool thing is, is you can make a transition for this. So right now it's simply going to look like this. Gotcha! And boom. Zigzagoon is entered, right? Or I can go down to this bottom left part and hit transitions. And I can just about do anything I want to do here. So you just drag it in between the clip you want for that transition to be there. You can also drag that clip longer if you'd like. And then what will happen if it shows, it might not in the preview. And then it flashes and boom, I caught Zigzagoon. Now when you're all done editing your file, let me unmute these, um, we've got the video clip, so we have our whole video here, about 2 minutes 45 seconds. You've got your overlay on the top. If we caught any badges, we would just do the same thing. We'd go into GIMP, we would, un you know, we would take our badge one, here it is, nope, here it is, undo it. We would export it at and put, let's say, it was the third part of the episode. So we still had Zigzagoon and Mudkip, but we also gained a badge. So we'd export it as episode 1C. Or if we ended up losing Zigzagoon before the badge, then we could have that remove Zigzagoon, export it, and then export another one, at adding Gym Badge. Um, but we have our overlay here. Next, we want to focus on the audio. I didn't do any recording in here because it wouldn't have worked with me editing. But you'll see I made some noise kind of hard to see but these little lines are detecting audio again this top clip and it depends on how it is in OBS but the top clip I had was input which is my microphone the bottom clip I had was the gameplay sound so this is going to be any of the gameplay sound and you'll see that this is just noises so if you end up finding that maybe your audio is louder than your video you can go over here to the left and this slider will affect one audio volume this slider will affect the other one. Now I found that about 12, you don't want to go over 12. So if you're playing your video, see how that's run, run, ranging about 24 and if my voice, let me see if I can go to this clip. See how my voice there, it was jumping above 12. It's usually the red zone and that just means it's probably too loud. Um, so you want to see, just go through your clip and see any of the loudest points, which is going to have the 
the highest bar, the most thick bar, you'll want to make sure that that stays about 12. And then your audio about between 12 and 24, it depends on what you're playing. Anyway, we're all set with that. We have our nice overlay. We've got our audio. We didn't have to do any hard work besides, you know, going in and entering the Pokemon that we caught afterwards. Um, if you ever need to move, just know that your OBS file is together. But if you ever need to separate that, maybe the audio didn't record right or something and it wasn't off. It was off with what your uh, actual gameplay was. You can actually click on something, let's say, your voice audio and you can hit you and that removes it from the group so that you can actually move that separate file away from the rest of them. Just something that I didn't learn till later and I thought it was very helpful. Um, same thing with these guys. If I move him, it's not going to move the rest of the clip. So what you can do is at the bottom here, you can do auto ripple and turn that on in all tracks. And then when I move it, everything is moved. So because I forgot to enter my intro, I want to move all this over, put my intro in, and then move all this back. And then make sure you unselect that. Alright, so now I have... Move this down. This kind of gives you a good uh, representation of the audio here. So if I play this, it's going to be rather loud. And you'll see, but if I turn that down, I'm around the 24 range. Again, I want to be maybe around 12. So that you can match that audio across the board so one thing is not louder than the other. Because you don't want your viewers to watch you and be like, Whoa, that was really over over the top. And then they turn it down and then they can't even hear your voice so they turn it back up. Kind of like commercials when you're watching a movie and the movie's real quiet so you turn it up and then a commercial hits you. Anyway, we're all done with our video. We've got everything in here. If you're not going to add anything extra, you know, OBS did all the hard work for you. You just had to add in your overlay stuff edits and then adjust your sound so when we're all done and we are ready to create this and render it so that we can upload it first we're going to do file save as and this is very similar to gimp whatever you know wherever you want to save it and we'll do alpha episode one save it now that saved it as a vegas file meaning you can go back in and edit it if you need to. But when we're done with that, we want to do file, render as, and you'll have to figure out your render settings however you want. Um, in most cases, when you're uploading to YouTube though, you want to do this Magix AVC AAC MP4, and then match whatever your file is. So again, if it's a 720 with 30 FPS, you want to use this template. If you, you have a 1080 with 60 FPS, you want to use this template. And you can always customize template. Give it a second. And change your settings here. So. Cancel that. Anyway, when we're done, when we're done, we want to double click our file. We want to make sure that this yellow marker is at the beginning of our video and at the, the end of our video. That tells Vegas that I want you to render everything within this boundary. And then we know we want to go to render as. Choose your options. I'm going to use my normal one. Browse is going to tell Vegas where you want to save this video when it's all done rendering. So again, I'm just going to go to tutorial. It's going to name it whatever you saved the file as, but you can change that. And hit save. Name it. It'll give you the estimated file size, and then all you have to do is hit render. And then it's failing on me because I have some rendering right now, but it will give you a bar of how much has been rendered and how long that's going to take. Pretty simple. Uh, again, let me know if you have any questions down in the comments, any feedback, let me know. I hope you like and subscribe to this video, and I'll see you guys around next time.